Good morning, shepherds, and greetings from inside our sanctuary right next to the prayer cross. Like many of you, I haven't been venturing out very far from my home only for those bare essential trips in order to protect myself and protect those around me. But today seemed like an appropriate day to get back here to church to record this Faith on the Go devotional for you all. Because over the past two-ish weeks or so, I don't know about you, but just as much as I've been hearing about the increasing number of cases of COVID-19, both locally and in the country and worldwide, along with revised recommendations that seem to be coming out daily, I've also been hearing how people have been coming together to make things happen and to spread a little joy in our communities in the midst of all this. I've heard reports of truckers who are continuing to get supplies to our stores. There have been people who've been socking our shelves all night and letting those who are at risk come first into our stores. Carnival Cruise Line, get this, even actually reached out to President Trump and told him we can match those big Navy ships with some fully staffed cruise ships to care for those who might be ill. GM, evidently, is starting by next week to halt their work on cars and instead are going to begin making ventilators for hospitals who don't have what they need. Women and children, and even men for that matter, whoever is at home and looking for something to do, are starting to make homemade masks for hospitals who desperately need them. Restaurants and Schools and anybody who has access to a large kitchen are being, beginning to say, hey, we got space to make food. We'll make it. How can we get it to you? Churches, much like our own and others, are holding online services and trying to keep people together. NBA players are beginning to say, hold our basketballs. Well, <laughs> well we write some checks for those who typically clean and keep up our arena. Construction companies have begun saying, hey, we don't need these dust masks right now because we can't be out on work sites, so use these as a temporary measure until you can get something better. And for Pete's sake, have you heard, even breweries are starting to use their leftover ingredients to make hand sanitizer for companies and medical facilities. That's all around the country of how different people are joining together to bring some hope and to bring some joy. But even locally, if you haven't found it yet, there is a new Facebook group. I just had to find the title of it. There it is. Spreading Joy Quarantine Walks. There's a group who is pushing for different houses around the Muscatine County to put, make rainbows and put them in windows or draw them in chalk on driveways or just put them wherever so that way kids, when you need an activity to do, you can start walking around your neighborhoods or maybe have your parents drive you to another neighborhood where you can start counting how many rainbows there are. And even for us adults like myself who are taking those walks and those runs as a break from the rest of the day, you begin seeing those signs as a reminder that we really truly are in this together, even if it seems like we're all on our own right now. But even beyond that, the staff at MCSA have been tirelessly working to adapt food processing protocols and United Way has been coordinating food routes to get food to people. And even those with a little extra time on their hands are calling myself and other organizations and saying, hey, how can we help? We have time. How can we come together to make a difference? All around our community and around our world, people are coming together. People are coming together perhaps in ways that they might not have before. But now we're united around a common purpose and a common goal and a commonness as humanity to love and care and respect each other. Well, as a faith community, not only here at Shepherd of the Cross, but around the world, we have that same kind of tool in our tool chest to come together and to make a difference. So maybe that's why yesterday Pope Francis invited Christians from around the world to pray. In our home denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA, we received this invitation through the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches to join in the Lord's Prayer today, Wednesday, March 25th, at noon at our local time. The invitation is simple. Just 
pray together, knowing that you're joining your brothers and sisters from our time zone at the same exact time, and knowing that there will be this ripple effect from one time zone to the next, to the next, to the next, all throughout the world today. It's for that reason that I wanted to get this faith on the go out to you guys a little sooner than normal, not at noon, but a little bit closer to mid-morning today. So that way you could write a note for yourself or set an alarm on your phone or, or something so that way you could stop and pray the Lord's Prayer at noon today. I'll be doing so. And I hope that you'll also join us as we do our part as people of faith to make a difference even just through our prayer. So gather your kids at noon. Pray the Lord's Prayer. And if you, they don't know it yet, today would be an awesome chance to teach them the Lord's Prayer. I have to confess, sometimes the Lord's Prayer has sometimes seemed just like another rote prayer. I mean, it's something we pray every single week within worship. But at a time such like this, there's something to be said about everyone doing the same thing. And there's something to be said about everyone learning and knowing and praying the same prayer. Not just any old prayer, but the prayer that our Father taught us to pray. So in just a moment, I'm going to invite us to pray. Right now, as a part of this Faith on the Go devotional. But then I also invite you to pray at noon. If you're watching this a little afternoon on Wednesday, I simply invite you to wait until the top of the hour of the next hour and pray again at that point. Because who knows, by that point, you might be praying with your brothers and sisters out in California or out in Hawaii or out in Japan or in China, no matter what hour you pray. Today on Wednesday, March 25th, at the top of the hour, you will be joining with Christians around the world who are coming together, united, to make a difference in Christ's name. Before we pray right now, just one quick announcement for those of you who have been walking through Lent with us and using the resources that we have been putting together. Wanted to alert you that those resources are now on our website at shepherdofthecross.org slash Lent 2020 Journey to the Cross. Those resources will also be emailed out to our congregation. It is our hope and our prayer, dear shepherds, that we can not only remain connected to each other and connected to Christ during this time, but connected to all of God's human family. So let's pray in the words that our Father taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, dear shepherds. We'll see you again soon.